Hi guys, I'm sorry about that. I was just interrupted. Um, uh, someone needed to come in and do something in the room. That I'm recording the class, so I thought I would just stop the recording and then start it again now. But there's only about 10 minutes left anyway. Um, but yeah, something that I wanted to... Another poem that we can look at, and as I say, we don't really have time to analyze everything that's going on in these poems, but something that we can look at in this long poem um, is, first of all, the way in which um, it's a common characteristic of new narrative writing to uh, to name individuals, to um, to establish a kind of community. And we saw this in, um, in Wieners, too. Remember Jimmy the Pusher, the guy that he's um, hanging out with, who was a real person. Um... And Dodie Bellamy is someone with whom Kevin Killian was in an open marriage um, through a lot of his life, and she features very much in his writing. Um, and here we have December 15th, Dodie Scornful. Is he your new boyfriend? I'm humming and whoring. Well, what do you mean? I'm not doing him. Doing him means having sex with him. Um, but would you like to, she says. And there's a way in which this reads as a as something like a kind of maybe a discussion about jealousy within a kind of open relationship, um, but also within the context of the crisis that Killian is writing about and within the context that we know about, this is also very much a discussion of the of the serious consequences that might come from having multiple partners during the AIDS crisis. So... Something very private um, comes to take on a very kind of public consequence, um, we can say. It takes on a... It takes on a significance in relation to the public health crisis which is going on at the time at the same time as being what appears to be a very private conversation between uh two intimate partners and then we have the line ron johnson dies at home over here which speaks in a very matter of fact way about the um about the way in which people died during aids people dropped off and dropped away in a way which just kind of inserting this into the poem creates this matter of fact effect. Um, and again, we have a kind of insight into um, into Killian's life with Bellamy. He says Dodie would really like to get Marjorie Perloff to talk about something. Marjorie Perloff is a literary critic, um, a writer about American poetry in particular, uh, American modernist poetry in particular, and she's someone who's very well known for her, um, I'd say fairly well known, like relatively well known for her writing on um, on modernism. And her writing and getting her to talk would be a kind of concern um, for two academics. As I said, Killian is not was not academically trained to the extent that Bersani was, but he still taught in universities and he still had a presence, an increasing presence after this book and his other writing in especially creative writing courses in, in America. Um, so we have a kind of insight into intellectual couples' lives, which is mediated by the potential, um, the potential consequences of AIDS and also by the... by the potential consequences of AIDS as shot through with um, with the very real um, danger of um, contracting HIV if one um, had multiple partners. And we see the way that the poem encourages us to understand the public and the private is in some way coming together in um, within the context of the AIDS 
within the context of AIDS and the, on, and the crisis which is going on. Um, we'll finish by looking at the last poem. Um, or the last two poems in the collect in the collection. Um, the poem prior to this, The Phantom of the Opera, ends has a number of references to AIDS, but ends with this statement. Forget the name of the man's voice. The corpses change, but the party goes on forever. Is this a reference to Killian's memories? Um, the people that he knows who have died, um, the way that he remembers them change. Is it a reference to the actual people who continue to die from AIDS and who have continued to die from AIDS? Um, and what is the party? Is the party the kind of party um, that Bassani might be writing about, the party of the conservative um Reaganite family for whom the death of people suffering from AIDS is something to be managed and to be um, dealt with, not to be intervened in, um, something to be surveilled rather than cured. Um, or is the party the continuation of a kind of queer scene and a queer lifestyle in the face of AIDS? Um, and these things kind of they could be coexisting in the line. They could be, um, they could both be there. Um, is there a kind of sense of lamentation in this idea that the party is still going on and the corpses change? The fact that the corpses are referred to as corpses and not as people also suggests the extent to which um, the deaths from AIDS that Killian sees around him uh, necessarily have a kind of impersonal quality to them um, after a while, too. He can't remember the names of everyone. He doesn't know the specifics. Um, and then finally, we have this moment. I was trying to write, to write before AIDS catastrophe made writing inequitable. The mind alone, a corsage of pink crinkles, Rather like the asshole of Tommy, which when I touched it with my thumb, wet, shivered alive. So we have this description of Killian trying to write before AIDS made writing inequitable. AIDS made writing somehow impossible, unable to face up to the reality that it was, that was going on. Um, then he describes the mind alone, a corsage of pink crinkles, like a brain. Um, but then that immediately transfers into someone's asshole, someone that um, Killian is touching and a kind of um, playful homosexual intimacy. And these things coexist, this kind of memory, this strong image of, um, of a gay intimacy that um, Killian feels vividly that he wants to hold on to, that he remembers with precision. There's something very very precise and beautiful with this kind of shivered alive moment. Um, sexuality produces something which is profound and vivid and that needs to be held onto at the same time that the kind of general quality of the AIDS catastrophe, the impersonal quality of AIDS has rendered or almost rendered. We see that Killian does eventually find a way to um, get around this representational problem. Um, through Argento and through the kind of commodity of mass cinema and through the tropes that it offers him as a way, I think, um, I think the quote from Mills suggesting that this kind of writing is something which uh, cushions memory um, is interesting or performs a kind of pr protective shield so that Killian can write um, without having to engage directly but at the same time we see all through these poems the way in which the reality of AIDS but also the memory of the kind of intimacies that Killian has known and has lost as a result of AIDS um, kind of break through and continue um, and persist 
Okay, so yeah, that's the end of it's the end of today. There's a lot more that we could have spoken about in terms of both Bersani and Killian. Uh, but I hope that you got something out of that. I hope it was interesting for you. And yeah, next class we'll be looking at Jarman's Blue and his film version of Shakespeare's Tempest. Um, so yeah, have a good few days. And the task for this class, if you want to do it, is to write a response to Bersani and Killian or both of them, and uh, yeah, write about what you find interesting, write about if there's anything that you find difficult or challenging or ethically questionable about their work, um, and yeah, I'm interested in how you guys understand the AIDS crisis, and AIDS is an ongoing phenomenon, um, it's something that would have played a, a deep, deep role in um, a kind of queer self-identity um, in the 90s and the 80s. Um, and I'm interested in how much you guys now feel that AIDS is a defining part of what it means to be queer, or maybe the history um, of what it means to be queer, as you guys may or may not uh, relate to it. Um, so yeah, I will speak to you again soon. Okay, bye.